we were given hints during this whole 100 years quest of some, you know, stuff that happened in the Alvarez arc. You know, what I'm referring to is once Lucy was messing with Natsu's book, you know, his Aetherius book, she ended up having that uh, essence of E and D go into her body. And one of the more interesting things that was laid after it, laid out after that rather, was when Zeref died, Natsu did not. Now we know that Natsu was alive because of living magic. He had a connection to Zeref as all Aetherius demons had that, you know, as long as Zeref was alive, you know, they were, you know, otherwise good. They seemingly didn't age other than Natsu. Natsu is a little different than the other Aetherius. But also the fact that Natsu was at one point dead, came back to life, again, living magic. But because Zeref died, all the demons that he created were supposed to die. Again, they're cutting off that connecting point of how they're even alive in the first place. And Natsu did not die. And one of the theories around that was that, obviously, when we saw the aspect of E&D go into Lucy's body, that she was now the connecting point between them. You know, now it is attached to her instead of attached to Zeref. That being how Natsu lived. And that was actually, you know, opened up more once we got to the point where Ignea forced Natsu to eat his flames. And Lucy said during that point that it was the first time that she ever was really afraid of Natsu's fire. And top of even that, when Natsu was rampaging, getting ready to pretty much reduce Ignea, or reduce, sorry, Mercphobia's body to ash and even burn the ash into nothing, uh, that the only person that was able to stop him was Lucy. And as soon as he, like, he was hurting her, he just completely halted all functionality and then just, you know, came out of the form and, you know, gained control again. Now, as we are right now in the chapter, we have Natsu who got in a unfortunate situation with Wraith because Wraith is a ghost. He is not alive. He does not have a physical form, but he can affect things that are physical. You know, he can hit Natsu, but Natsu can't hit him. And as well, on top of that, he could use, you know, soul powers and straight, like, attack Natsu, beat him the hell up with his attacks, and then ended up pulling his soul out of his body. Whereas Lucy is now being wrapped up by, you know, Lisana, you know, in her white brainwashed self, and she wants to convert Lucy over to the, you know, the side of the White Doctrine with the White Witch. Now, this is the spot I think that is really, really good to set up what I'm talking about because the whole theory that Natsu and Lucy are connected not only has a really good story aspect to it, but I know the shippers will explode. But there's the fact that right now we have a really good point for to establish that because the primarily primary opponents right now are each of the dragon gods and the white witch the dragon eaters are a threat but they aren't the primary kind of like big overarching opponent of each arc the, you know they are components of them but rather each arc you know is going to be centered around uh i mean i guess really part of because this is more of a saga but you know each part is really centered around the dragon god with toka doing her shenanigans uh during you know in the meantime now, whereas these guys are all dangerous, you know, none of the Dragon Eaters have been pushovers. They're not unbeatable. They seem to just have, you know, some normal kind of like, you know, opponent with hacks. You know, each Dragon Slayer has their own perk. The Dragon Eaters seem to be a lot harder to kind of like make out because theirs are so weird. Now, in this, we can get some E&D shenanigans. I fully expect Natsu, you know, his soul to somehow like resonate with uh, Lucy or, you know, during this state, her end up kind of like having some connecting point, like activation of Nuts' Ethereum's powers, either like the soul changing and being too dangerous for Wraith to eat, maybe the soul taking on a, you know, the demon form. Cause now you, this is his power. This is like Natsu's entire essence. You know, he's been pulled out of his human form. So now he could end up like fully, like realizing the level of, capability that he's at while not being you know in that restriction that it's going to damage his physical body and you know we could get some straight like demonic powers activate go crazy or maybe just some more foreshadowing maybe you know it, it takes like a you know a shape of like a dragon or you know we get some like demonic like face within the you know the soul of natsu the symbol maybe even of the dragon seed and you know something to uh, to really hype that up, but also uh, we really definitely need some hints towards the, the connecting point. I, I think that's the most important thing. As really, when you have the characters right now, who can really come to help uh, Natsu or Lucy? I mean, you have Gray, 
uh, but Gray can't be in two places at once because Urza's, you know, she's been uh, bound up by Jalal using Bind Snake and is carrying her off. Wendy's busy battling up Nebel. I mean, really, the only thing that I can see helping them at this point is, you know, the aspect between them, the connecting point. And that will again why I said that it's really good that we have the Dragon Eaters as opponents as... Before, like with Mercephobia, we had the first Dragon God, and then we got the introduction of Ignea, and, it, you know, that power up because, you know, them all together were getting devastated by a 50% Mercephobia, whereas a full power one was way beyond them. But we got, you know, E and D. Well, what I assume is like what I've been calling Ethereus Dragon Force Natsu completely decimated him. He was forced to take that power up. He didn't want to, he had to. It was, you know, it was either do it or, you know, let. Elmina burn and where I thought that was a really good way to open it up because you had to at the very first opponent the guy who you know he didn't have any real control he was much more of a rampaging beast at that point and here with the dragon eaters we can get like a display of that for their uh further like setup of this power that he has you know for more setup of this eventual level that Natsu will be able to control at some point and you know the sheer level of danger that he represents i mean we already know how dangerous e and d was um in explanation and kind of like hype we never got to see the full extent we only got to see a fraction of it and what it was capable of of completely demolishing uh demaria and her power with chronos but with that you know him doing some crazy boost stuff and going against the dragon eaters is a much better way to kind of like to establish that than having him stomp another dragon god i mean though the first one was devastating it was in a way that we knew was a lot more fair given that it was forced on him you know that marsphobia wasn't really himself um and here all i'm hoping that happens from that is wraith doesn't die because so far wraith and scolion are my favorite of the dragon eaters and i really don't want either of them to die and whereas scolion i think is in a much better position to you know lose but not get demolished if natsu ends up going in any way connecting with his dragon or Ethereus powers, or, or both, you know, risk for him, that he has the potential of dying. Because those flames that he used against Mercephobia had the same damage level that he had against uh, Zeref. You know, it's the only time his fire's ever been able to really burn him like that. And those flames were hot enough and, like, crazy enough to burn time. So I imagine they'd be able to burn a spirit. So watch out for that raid. Anyway, what's funny is, like, there, there's other things we could talk about, you know, the fight between uh, Wendy and Nebel, the fun, like, that's going on with Jalal and Urza. But really, like, the, I think the only thing that people really want to talk about, the setup for it, is the Lucy and Natsu stuff. I mean, we could easily pull over to, you know, Wendy's fight and see some of that. But I, I feel like the fact that we're going to be weekly for another, I think, nine chapters, the best thing to really utilize is, like, the hype stuff. It's about... It's, well, on to the top of that point is it's October. It's the spooky month, so do some crazy demon shenanigans. I mean, that's what we really want to see. It's some crazy demon dragon stuff going on. It's a spooky Natsu uh, for this month of October. But anyway, comment below. Tell me what your hopes are. I, I mean, if you're, like, more interested in seeing Wendy versus Nebel, what's going on with Jalal uh, and Urza or even Laxus and Kyria, I mean, Gray, we don't even know what he's doing. I imagine Gray's probably trying to talk maybe to some of the members of the, the guild that he's taken down. But, like, um, all of my eggs right now are in the basket of seeing some EAD shenanigans. But other than that, comment below. I really appreciate the thumbs up the video. Remember, the like button and the subscribe button. And check out my other videos. But I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed. And I thank you all for listening. Bye.